In the previous two videos, I've introduced a method for approaching limits as the input gets larger and larger. In this video, I want to talk about the application of these limits, the applied mathematics perspective. What does it mean to consider the limit at infinity of a model? It captures the long-term behavior. What happens to the model eventually? This can be understood for any input, but for the most part, this is about limits as time goes to infinity. Of course, in any model, time always has a limit. Even in cosmological models of the universe, the long-term behavior is measured in billions or trillions of years, but not infinity. However, the limit going to infinity is not about actual infinity, but about the behavior in the long run. Therefore, I use this kind of limit to determine the long-term behavior. A common example of this is the study of algorithmic complexity. An algorithm can often be described by a function, at least partially. That function can measure the long-term behavior of the algorithm, studying how long the algorithm will take for complicated and large inputs. Asymptotic analysis here can be about algorithmic complexity. If an algorithm has a higher asymptotic order, it requires more computing time, more resources. There is a whole version of asymptotic analysis called big O and little o notation in computing science. I'm not going to introduce those notations, but it is useful to realize that asymptotic analysis is central to the understanding of algorithms. For other situations, such as population and ecology, long-term behavior is often, often about stability or growth. Will a population stabilize at a certain value, decay to zero, or grow without bound? The limits at infinity can determine this behavior for a population. Let me talk about some population models. Here are four. I'll do the asymptotic analysis of each. In each, p0 or p0 is the starting value, what you get when you evaluate p at time zero. In the first, I have exponential growth and no denominator at all. This is unbounded growth. The limit as t goes to infinity is just infinity. This measures a population that will just keep growing. In the second, I have a negative in the exponent. Instead of exponential growth, this is exponential decay. The negative exponent leads to smaller and smaller numbers. The limit here as t goes to infinity is zero. This is a population that will eventually go extinct. The third is more complicated, but I can use asymptotic analysis. The order of the top is e to the at, and the asymptotic order of the bottom is also e to the at. Therefore, I need the leading coefficients. The coefficients of the top is p0 times k, and the coefficient of the bottom is just p0. Dividing those, the limit as t goes to infinity is k. This population will level off to some value k. This is the logistic growth model, and k is called the carrying capacity. This is a model which describes a population that fills its environment and then persists at a stable, unchanging level. Finally, in 4, I can complicate the logistic model even more. The first piece of this is the same, so it will level off to k. However, I have multiplied by this new term. This is a sine wave centered around 1 with amplitude 1 fifth. Multiplying a stable limit by this means that the limit will oscillate. So this population doesn't approach any value, but oscillates around k with an amplitude of k over 5. This might be a population with seasonal variation, or some other behavior which ebbs and flows over time. In any case, for all four models, the limit as t goes to infinity was the way that I investigated the long-term behavior, what the population was eventually going to do. Let me talk about some other models, and in particular, show you how limits at infinity work in inputs other than time. Limits at infinity can be used to talk about extreme values of models, asking what happens as the limit, pun intended, of all the possible situations. Again, infinity is a shorthand for larger and larger, and that shorthand, that idea, captures extreme behaviors. This is the ideal gas law a formula that governs the pressure and volume of a gas. P is pressure, V is volume, 
of the region that contains the gas. N is the number of molecules of the gas involved, R is a special constant that governs the relationship, and T is temperature. In this equation, I assume that all three quantities on the right are constant, the amount of the gas, the gas constant, and the temperature. I can rearrange this to get pressure as a function of volume or vice versa. I'll solve for pressure. Then I can ask for limits. I can ask, for example, what happens to the pressure as the volume goes to zero? This is an extreme situation. Asking what happens to the gas as I make the container for it smaller and smaller. I get a limit with a constant numerator and a denominator shrinking to zero. A fixed number divided by a smaller and smaller number gives a larger and larger number, so this will diverge to infinity. Unsurprisingly, as volume is decreased to zero, the pressure of the gas will increase without bound. What about when I send the volume to infinity, when I let the gas spread out into larger and larger amounts of space? I have a constant numerator and a linearly growing denominator. By asymptotic analysis, the denominator grows larger and the limit must be zero. This also makes some sense. As the volume gets larger and larger, the pressure will decrease to zero. The ideal gas law is but one model of the behavior of gases. Not all gases can be reasonably approximated by an ideal law. Another gas law is the van der Waals gas law. P, V, R, N, and T are the same, but there are two new constants, A and B, which are some positive numbers. What is different about this model? Well, I can again ask for the extreme value by looking at the limits. I'm not going to even solve here to isolate. I'll just look at the pieces in the form that they are presented here. I want to know what happens when the pressure goes to infinity. This is basically asking what volume leads to an ever-growing spike in pressure. For ideal gases, pressure tending to infinity corresponded a volume going to zero. Here, strangely, the situation is different. As pressure goes to infinity, the first term in brackets goes to infinity as well, since I am adding a positive constant. The right side is entirely fixed, so in order to make this balance, if the first bracket is getting larger and larger, the second bracket must be getting closer and closer to zero. To make that happen, V must be getting closer and closer to the special value NB. So, in this case, the volume that leads to an uncontrolled spike in pressure isn't the zero volume, but the special volume given by the constant NB. Maybe this gas has a compression limit. There is a volume, a non-zero volume, below which it cannot be compressed anymore. To get the pressure growing to infinity, I just need to get the volume closer and closer to this compression limit. I don't expect you to be experts in gas law analysis after this. The point of this demonstration is the idea that long-term or extreme values of models can be measured by limits, and that different models have different limits, therefore different extreme and or long-term behavior.